to everybody for joining today to discuss our brand new qualification, the Extended Math Certificate. And we're going to go through a little bit of the story so far. So what kind of led us up to this point and the work that we've been doing to get to this point, what our vision is for this qualification, the qualification headlines and the structure, what content is included in this qualification, how our qualification can be delivered, what support you can expect from us as your awarding organisation, and then the next steps for you if you decide that this qualification is one for you. So our story so far, this kind of development started around September 2022, but we have been talking about delivering this qualification for a long, long time. We were aware that we had sort of a gap between the GCC and the A-level qualification, and that this qualification was, was needed in order to fill that gap and take learners on their journey through GCSE, right through onto A-level, beyond, no matter whether it's maths or a different subject. So we started out looking at some surveys and some research and talking to lots of centres. Some of you may have already been involved in some of those discussions around what it is that you guys wanted to see from this qualification. And from that, we had some focus groups with some teachers and we got an idea of what it was that kind of the teachers wanted us to put in this qualification. And from there, we worked really hard with a team of writers and reviewers to come together to create some trial questions, which we trialled with students in January of last year. Then we were able to kind of get some feedback from those trials and some of those materials and develop an actual set of formal sample assessment materials. And those, again, were shared and trialled by students and teachers, and we got feedback on those. And again, we went back to our team of writers and reviewers, and we finalised the documents, and we decided using that feedback, what was key in the SAMS and the specification, and we uh, released the final specification in the SAMS last October. So the ones that you see on the website have come down to lots of research, lots of teacher insights, and student insights as well, student feedback was really key and pivotal in getting us to this point. And the specification and the SAMs are available on our website. And just a little bit of additional information for you. We do have funding approved. So from the release of the SPEC and SAMs, we gained off quote funding for 14 to 16 year olds. And we've also launched the course guide and some other sample materials as well. But I'll talk through some of those additional ones and Sarah will also pick up on some of those additional ones a bit later on. So what was our vision? Our vision at Pearson, obviously we're committed to building lifelong confidence in maths. And as I said previously, we've listened to what teachers and learners and leaders wanted from this qualification that would stretch, challenge and motivate them to succeed. We've built a qualification that allows learners to express themselves and unlock their full potential in maths. So we thought it was really important that this qualification really stretched and challenged those GCSE learners so that they could, could really enhance their knowledge and, and focus on those key core concepts in order to help them progress on to further study. Whether that be maths or a qualification that contains maths or whether they go on to something completely different and they just enjoy maths, just really kind of extending their, their knowledge. So just to go back into that a little bit deeper, this qualification is designed to stretch and challenge your GCSE learners. It will dive deep into those key core concepts to encourage stretch and challenge and to help them to achieve their full potential. It will also expand on the subject's mathematical knowledge. So like I said earlier, whether they decide to go on to study maths or whether they decide to go on to study a different subject, it will really increase and enhance their existing mathematical knowledge. We listen to your feedback and we have created a qualification that suits your needs in the classroom. So with key concepts and topics that make sense for your students at the stages of their learning journey. So this could be really, you know, flexibly taught. It can be taught as early as year nine, year 10, year 11, however it fits in with your scheme of work, whether it's going to be more independent and you want your students to be more independent led with this qualification. It's really flexible. And I know Seb will we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. We have made switching really easy. So if this qualification is the one for you, 
then you can get in touch with our math subject team and they'll be able to help you switch if you're already doing this qualification or a similar qualification or if it's a qualification that you've not yet delivered within this space then our maths team can really help you get started and can can share with you all of the work that we've done to help you switch or just to support you when you start delivering. And as some of you or most of you may already know, the support you know and trust from Pearson will continue in this qualification. So we've got a huge number of resources available throughout the year. We're going to have some get ready to teach events later on in the summer. We've got lots of plans underway for lots of resources and things that we, we're going to develop to help support you to deliver this qualification. There's going to be lots of network events, which you can register for on our PD Academy. And everything that we, we publish will be available on either the website or the Maths Emporium or both. So qualification headlines. What is this qualification? So it's a qualification that's designed for your higher achieving GCSE maths learners. So for those students that are going to be achieving around a grade seven or above. And the way that we've developed it is so that it can be really easily taught alongside your GCSE maths qualification. So it can be embedded into your existing scheme of work, which allows for flexible delivery or for guided or self-study. So if you want these students to do a lot of independent study, then this qualification can be given out, you know, as homework, as additional independent learning. It extends our current higher tier GCSE maths content. So it challenges that GCSE maths content you know, to grade nine and beyond in preparation for their further study. Like I said earlier, whether that be maths or a different subject. It's designed to build the right foundation. So what we've embedded is those key core concepts. So those key core concepts will be you know, taught well, they'll be learned really really well so that when they go on to further or higher education those key mathematical concepts are, are really embedded. We also decided to assess uh, assessment objectives one two and three so we thought it was really important that that continues across the qualifications so that learners who are taking GCSE or go on to study uh, A level the assessment objectives where they will be looking at AO1, AO2, AO3 style questions will continue in this qualification. So it does take them right through from GCSE to A level. And as I said previously, we have been granted off call funding for ages 14 to 16. And there is a link on this slide deck. So if you did want some more information, you can click on that link and it'll take you to the website and you can see the, the details around that funding. So the assessment model. So we've decided and developed a qualification that has two papers, one calculator and one non-calculator. They are 75 minutes each and 60 marks. They will be sat in the same exam window. So they'll be sat in the summer of 2025 will be the first session. There is equal weighting for each paper and content and assessment objectives will be assessed across both papers. So they won't be specific content to one paper. It'll be delivered or uh, assessed across both. And they are shorter, more targeted assessments designed with the exam series in mind. So we were well aware that students have a lot of exams during the summer session. And so we kept it, you know, as, as short as we can so that we, you know, we're aware that those students will have a lot of exams. And in the corner there, you'll just see that there's some a little um, pie chart and there are three assessment objectives. It just says that we're going to be assessing 40% AO1, 30% AO2 and AO3, just to give you a little indicator of how the assessment objectives will be laid out. So our qualification structure, our grading scale explained. Some of you may have already seen that we have not used the number system. So we are not using a, a grade one to nine system as other general qualifications. We've gone for a past merit distinction and distinction star system. So those do broadly align to the GCSE standard of a seven, eight and nine, and then a nine, kind of a nine and beyond the distinction star. We took this from student and teacher feedback. So we want to be able to show that those working above a grade nine, you know, how would we, we demonstrate that? Well, that's how the distinction star comes in. What would a grade four mean in an extended further math certificate? It presumably will be better than a grade four at GCSE. So we wanted to make sure the qualifications were, were different in that aspect. So they weren't directly comparable in terms of the grades. You know, sometimes students may get 
a higher result in a GCSE qualification and a lower result in a further maths qualification. And, you know, we just wanted to make sure it was really clear to students of what grade they were obtaining. And again, the feedback there was, I want to easily explain the difference between a GCSE maths and a level two certificate grade. And so that's why we decided on this type of grading system rather than the one to nine grading system. So just gonna to talk to you a little bit about our content. So obviously we took the higher tier GCSE maths content as our starting point. And when we were going through the feedback from teachers, uh, it came out that we wanted lots and lots of algebra. So you asked for it, we delivered it in, in our qualification. We've got 50% plus will be assessing algebra. And then the remaining 50% will cover the other content areas, such as number, geometry, ratio, and probability. We haven't included any GCSE statistics because we are aware that quite a lot of centres that may be delivering this qualification will already be delivering GCSE statistics. So we didn't want there to be any overlap there. So this is just a little bit of our specification at a glance. So if you have already been onto our website, you'll see that this the content list has been published in the spec. And in there, you'll see the extended math certificate specification points, and there'll be detail and information around how those specification points link to the GCSE and the A-level specification as well. So we thought that was really important for you guys to, to see that within our extended math certificate specification. But this is just a little brief overview of what we have included in this qualification. So we've got lots and lots of different mathematical concepts. So we've got uh, SIDS, we've got inverse functions, we've got solving linear equalities, we've got Pythagoras theorem, conditional probabilities. There's lots and lots and lots of different mathematical concepts in this qualification for your students to really get their teeth into. So just, just a little bit of feedback that we've already obtained from some, um, some teachers. So we want our students to be challenged fully with GCSE topics and we want them to master the content which will best prepare them for further study. So we thought that was really important, you know, really enhancing those mathematical concepts at GCSE level, making sure they've got those down, they know them really, really well in order for them to progress on to further education. It can be difficult in an A-level class if some students have already been exposed to bits and pieces of A-level content. You'll see in our specification, we haven't included any A-level, brand new A-level content in there. So we, we kind of took that on board. And quite often at A-level, you must unpick some of the shortcuts that students might have learned at GCSE if they are kind of being taught little bits of A-level content before they move on to A-level. Um, so we thought it was better to establish the foundations that they need so that they can be taught the available content um, effectively. So I've just put in here just a couple of examples of the SAMS. So this is um, SAMS paper one, question eight. It assesses A2.5, which is identify and interpret roots, intercepts, turning points of quadratic functions graphically to choose roots algebraically and turning points by completing the square. And you'll also see that what we've done is we've added some worked examples onto the website. So if you went onto our website, you'll see that we've got the SANS and they are worked through. And on those worked through examples, what we've added is the specification points on the SANS. So you can see which extended math certificate specification point is being assessed in which question. And we've also included the assessment objectives. So you can see which assessment objective is assessing, is being assessed in each question. So you have the specification points and the assessment objectives in each question. We just thought it was really useful for you guys just to be able to see what kind of where we're going with the specification points and the assessment objectives. And then this is again the same. So this is another example. This is paper one, question nine. This assesses G4.6 and it's got eight marks and it assesses AO1 and AO3. You can kind of see there how the, the marks are associated with each assessment objectives. So yeah, if you wanted to look on our website at those in, in full and in detail, they are available on our website or the Emporium as well. So you can see the, the assessment objectives linking with the spec points in the SAMS. And I'm gonna pass over to Seb now, who's gonna go through how our qualification can be delivered. Thank you. Thanks, Grace. So I'm gonna move on to uh, a little bit about how the qualification can be delivered. So the, the main takeaway from this is that 
this qualification has been designed to be as flexible as you want it to be. Um, so in our specification, you'll see that the total qualification time is 121 hours, and that's the requirement for it to be the certificate. And we've indicated 60 hours of guided learning hours in there. But as guidelines, we're really aware that every setting is different. When developing this qualification and talking to teachers, talking to leaders, for every centre we spoke to, there was a slightly different way of how they might approach delivering this. And so we wanted not only our specification, not only our content, but also our resources to reflect that differences in approach. So while the total qualification time is there of 121 hours, we know that the vast majority of that is likely to be uh, contained within current timetables, GCSE maths, higher tier learning. We know that there are some centres that are going to be delivering this in the majority to, say, a top set in classroom time, but there will be others that rely on a good proportion of self-study and independent learning through homework or through after-school clubs, those kind of things. So everything that we've done is has got that flexibility in mind. It's also worth bearing in mind as well that the 14-16 the funding means that also you can start to deliver this qualification as early as year nine if you're teaching some of those higher tier topics earlier on and that, that would benefit from that stretch and challenge. So everything, and I'm going to move on to the scheme of work in just a moment, which will sort of demonstrate that a little bit further. But the, the key takeaway from this is that it, it really is a qualification that you can use to fit into how you want it to work for your current practice. So talking of the scheme of work, the final version is going to be published this week uh, on the uh, resources website, which I'm going to share the link for later on. But the scheme of work has been integrated with the GCSE higher tier. So there's a really clear link of how you can embed this scheme of work into your GCSE higher tier scheme of work. It's got suggested teaching hours throughout it and an exemplification of some of the objectives in there with, with through the additional guidance and the additional notes. So it makes it really clear where those areas of uh, extension are from GCSE higher tier and where that additional content that stretches further beyond kind of comes in. It also gives a really clear indication of where that overlap of the teaching content is and how it can be co-taught. So the scheme of work assumes additional one hour teaching per week for EMC, but again there's that flexibility in there that all of our resources are going to have that ability to be able to be delivered either guided or through independent study and the official scheme of work that we're publishing does it does make the assumption that, that they will have followed the GCSE scheme of work and again when you get to have a look at that you'll see just how how easily that can be sort of integrated into what your current setting sort of offers at that at the moment. Next I just wanted to go through some of our support because we know that this is the thing that that our Edexcel centres value more than anything is, is our dedication to our support. So I just want to go through just a snapshot of some of the things we've got lined up and tell you about what, what might be on its way in, uh, in the coming weeks, coming months uh, and beyond. So like we've already said, the things that we've already got available are the specification, the SAMs and the work solutions for the SAMs. On our website as well, you'll also find uh, a cor our course guide, which is a really good snapshot of the specification at a glance. And it summarizes a lot of what we're talking about today in one place to be able to go and have conversations with heads of department or other colleagues. We've also got available already a sample chapter of the textbook that's on its way. I'm going to leave Sarah to talk a little bit more later about the textbook, but the sample chapter, so chapter one from that brand new bespoke textbook is available for download. Again, you'll get the links later. And the draft scheme of work is available upon request. So if, if you're desperate to see it before the finalised version is published this week, then please do get in touch. And then just a few bits of what's coming. And again, this list is not exhaustive because these are just a few things that we've got in progress at the moment. But in terms of what other qualification support you receive, that in large part is down to you and what you want from us. So we're in a position where we want to know from you what it is you want 
in order to deliver this qualification for the first time and we can tailor our offer to that so but some of the things that we've got already in the pipeline is we've got a whole bank of practice topic papers all coming out we've got the first batch of those nearly ready to go so that you can start getting your teeth into them and in that spirit of having an element of independent study on them all of our topic papers are going to have like a QR code on on the front with a with an examiner walkthrough of the first question so one of our senior examiners is, is going to walk through a work solution of that first question to be able to guide students through the rest of that practice paper which you can obviously use if you wanted to or if you wanted to, to use those for an, for an in-class purpose you wouldn't have to have to rely on that we've got an additional set of specimen papers on their way so this will be another complete set of two papers calculator non-calculator that will complement the sample assessment materials and will be able to exemplify even more areas of the specification that we haven't been able to exemplify in the SAMs um, so they're they're in production as we speak We've got a series of mapping documents on the way that show not only how this specification will map to GCSE, but also how it will map to A-level, to GCSE, uh, to the international GCSEs, to the Edexcel Awards, to all of our maths qualifications. And so we're going to provide that range of mapping documents to see just how easy it is to integrate this teacher alongside some of the other qualifications you may be offering. Like I've mentioned, the scheme of work is going to be available this week. We've got more banks of practice papers coming out. And then when we get there, after the first sitting, uh, we'll have all of the usual support you'd expect through the papers being available via Exam Wizard to be able to create your own practice papers. And we're working on getting the specimen papers and the SAMs off on there as well. And then all the results plus data uh, will be integrated for this qualification too. And then the final bit that is, again, currently in production is we're working on exemplars for the SAMs. So, again, if you want to be involved in some of that, please do reach out to us. If you have got students that you want to, uh, that, that you uh, are starting to, to put the, the, the sample assessment materials in front of, uh, and you wouldn't mind us um, taking some of those student responses and having those conversations with you about how they responded, then, then we could use those as part of our exemplars like you would get for GCSE maths. And then the two bits there are in blue are what's coming, which I've, I've already touched on before, but those are our paid for resources, which are the Active Hub Essential Teaching Support Offer, which again, I'm going to let Sarah talk about, uh, and the textbook, which is coming later in the spring term. And all that is just a, uh, as a bit of a rough timeline. With, as I say, we've already got the, the course guide out as of February. We're at March for the for this second launch event. The practice papers are going to be ready within hopefully the next sort of six weeks or so. We're going to have the sample assessment to uh, shadow papers. So an, again, another bank of practice papers, practice questions to get stuck into. At around May, we're looking at the textbook and the digital paid for resources to be come out along with the, the exemplars. In June, we've already got uh, scheduled a couple of getting ready to teach events that will take us through to the first teaching in September. And then throughout the autumn term, that beginning term, we'll be releasing a series of uh, our online CPD events. And again, this is an opportunity for you to have your say um, and to guide exactly what that what that CPD offer will look like. So we're very happy. We've got some ideas of what what would already be required and, and what might be needed but again we want this to be steered and informed by what you tell us you want so do get in touch with your thoughts and ideas of uh, what you would like to see from CPD particularly for this qualification we can work with you to try and build uh, that package to be as supportive as, as, as we can make it and, and we'll, we'll run that, that throughout the first teaching year up until the first uh, assessment in 2025 where we'll obviously uh, we'll start turning our attention towards what that exam support and our and those revision support will look like through for first assessment in the summer 2025. So I mentioned the course guide earlier uh, and here it is at a glance. So I say it's a really good overview of the qualification as a whole, why you might want to deliver it, 
why you might want to choose it, uh, what it might be able to do for you and your students. And again, if you want, that's available from our website. So it's a, it's a, a really good snapshot to be able to go and start those conversations with department leaders, other colleagues, et cetera, et cetera. While we can't give any precise indicator of exactly how many marks are going to be needed for the grade boundaries when it comes to the live series, because that obviously depends on uh, the performance of those papers and the, 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 the candidates that sit them. So in, in, the, in the coming weeks, we are working with our, our brand new senior examining team. And what we're going to be working on is producing uh, a really detailed set of grade descriptors, which will indicate the standard of evidence that are going to be required at every boundary because it's that it's those descriptors that are going to be driving the positioning of the grade boundaries in the first sitting in 2025. So for setting the standard in 2025, it will be looking at those skills that, that we determine are required for each of those uh, grades. So a pass, merit and distinction, distinction star. So in the, in the next few weeks, we're, we're working closely with the, the senior examining team to make sure we've got that. Um, as, as precise as we possibly can and, and it will be those skills that you're that you're looking for when taking some of the specimen sets sample assessment materials and putting those in front of your students to really give an indication of where they um, where they're sitting with those with those grade uh, with those grade descriptors and therefore their, their grade boundaries so it, that really is one of our top priorities at the moment to make sure we're giving uh, as much information on that as possible so do look out for that and all of that information will be published on the website and again on our, on the maths emporium but for now uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to where you're going to find all that information later on but um, I'm going to hand over to Sarah now who's going to be talking you through a little bit about the published resources like I say I'll be back uh, back at the end to round everything off give all the links and where you can go and find more information uh, where you might need it. you a little bit more about the published resources that are going to be available from May. We are able to publish a new textbook which will be priced at $29.99. As I say it's available in May. We're also publishing some resources on ActiveHub which is our digital support to go alongside the textbook and both of these have been designed very specifically for students who probably will be working more independently in the way that we know the course is going to be taught more flexibly. So we've really thought long and hard about how best the textbook and digital resources will work for those students. And really importantly as well, it's mapped directly to the qualification, the brand new specification that's just been um, finalised and also to the scheme of work that has been written. So it supports that scheme of work alongside the GCSE, higher and the um, extended math certificate qualification. So this shows you a little bit of, of the taster of the textbook, but you can see even more when you um, go online and you can download the whole of the first chapter. So you'll be able to see just how, how the textbook is working. As I've explained, the structure follows the scheme of work. So lessons match exactly with the scheme of work that is provided and also follow the specification. We've got lots and lots of fully worked solutions and examples. And as I say, that really supports the students working independently um, and supports you as this brand new qualification just to see those work solutions and examples. We've got hints, we've got talking points that will support students as they work through the content. Lots and lots of practice for every lesson because we know how important that is in, um, in maths and GCSE maths. And then we bring all of that together at the end with a mixed practice chapter, which will just pull all of the learning from the whole qualification through to really help prepare them for the exams. We've got exam style questions um, for every lesson because as we know, it's, it's new to us and that practice is really important for the exams. And also flag up where we've got problem solving and reasoning questions, as well as all the links to GCSE. The textbook has been written by an expert team, so you can trust the content is there and that's support for the specification as well as independent learning. And then to support the textbook, we've got our Active Hub support, um, which is available as an essential teaching subscription. So this is a front of class book that you'll be able to use to model your lessons and to support those lessons through the textbook. 
and included in the resources there we've got lots of video walkthroughs which will help guide you and your students through example questions and these support the same videos that are available as part of the support directly from the qualifications. So that's sort of just really familiar um, approach that you'll be able to use with your students. We've got fully worked solutions for all of the examples and questions within the textbook, and they'll be available by the Solution Bank, which really will support students working independently so they can see step by step how the solutions have been reached. And then for every lesson, we're providing two editable worksheets, one of which is a practice. So more and more practice questions for students to use independently or for you to use um, within your lesson and also some purposeful practice as well as a whole, a whole worksheet for each lesson. And then that's supported as well by the SAMS in the assessment library and the functionality that you would expect from a front of class book with Zooms and hide and reveal answers as well. To say the sample material is available on the website now, both for the worksheets, the solution bank, and also the sample chapter, chapter one, that you'll be able to download and take a look at. And it will all be available from May, hopefully plenty of time to prepare for first teaching. Hopefully that's given you a good overview, but there is, there's more information for you to go and find out. And so I'm going to flash up a few QR codes on here. Don't worry if you can't snap those just now. I've got all the links at the end as well. And like I say, the presentation is available for you so that you can uh, go and explore those at your own time. So the first one is to visit our resources page, just like that Sarah was just going through. So for all the information on the published resources and how those can support the teaching of this qualification and to be able to download the free sample chapter of our textbook and the scheme of work will be available all through the resources page here. The next one is for our qualifications website, and that's the place where you're going to get our specification, sample assessment materials and course guide and more and more things will be put onto that website as they become available so the sams exemplars practice papers getting ready to teach events recordings will go on there and everything and there is also on that page a register your interest button so if you want to be kept up to speed or if you're thinking about whether this qualification is right for you and you'd like to talk to one of our uh, our math specialists further about exactly how that might look at your at your school click that button and enter your details um, it's not a commitment to anything but it just means that someone can be in touch with you and you'll be the first to hear about any new releases any new support that comes out and any, any more information that we've got as we run up to first teaching in september and another plea, which is to make sure that you've got yourself registered on the Maths Emporium and also make sure you signed up for the fortnightly newsletter. So if you go onto the Maths Emporium and then scroll to the bottom, there's a link to sign up to the newsletter. And those things are separate because obviously for GDPR reasons, we will, will only use your email address if you give us permission to do so. So if you want to sign yourself up for the fortnightly newsletter, that's probably the best place to get all the latest information on updates and releases and when when network events are going to are able to be registered for all that kind of stuff and you can do that via the mass emporium and this last one will take you to the pd academy which is where many of you will have registered for this event and you will be able to find the getting ready to teach events for the summer term and we're we're looking to see if those are position at the right time or whether we, we we might need to put on some more events of those uh, to make sure that they're sort of landing at the right time for you but they are available to sign up for from now and then the last one is if you haven't heard it already we do have our own podcast called the right angle and grace was a guest on that podcast hosted by our colleague Teresa. She was talking all things level two extended math certificate for with Teresa and going through you know what the motivation was behind the, the qualification and just what it's taken to get to this point with what we think is a, a, a really good qualification offer for you. And as promised, there we go, just to finish off, all of those links that I've just mentioned uh, are available there. So if you can't scan them as a QR code, when you get the, the presentation or download it, you can click on the, through the, those links to be able to get what you need to find out more. So, so there's a question that's cropped up a few times about uh, whether this counts towards one of the buckets. And short answer is, is no. Only the GCSE maths 
that can count as the level two towards the progress eight measure scores. So the disqualification doesn't count towards the the, the, the the progress eight measure scores, but it does, as I say, we said before, does qualify for the 1416 funding. But yeah, since 2017, Ofqual have made it clear that GCSE is the maths qualification at level two that will count towards progress eight measure scores. If you want to find out any information, do follow those links. Do sort of keep your ears to the ground. You can contact us via teachingmaths at pearson.com as well. Do get in touch, as I say, to talk to you, to work with you, to listen to you, and as I say, make this qualification as, as successful as it can be for you and for your learners. So I wish you a very happy uh, rest of the afternoon, and I really do look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll speak to you very, very soon. Thank you.